from this one. All right. Who well, well, um, are they? Is anyone here as in this class? Okay, you are online. Yes. All right. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, class. Good afternoon. 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 Okay, my name is Abel. I'll be taking you on, on this course today. So it's a two hours uh, course, uh, lecture. I will employ you to pay attention, and the question will be asked after the class so that. We won't waste much of our time. Um, before we start, I would like to know every one of us that is here taking part in this class. So if you can hear me, you can go ahead and introduce yourself to the class. My name is Atiladi Ajao. Yes, sir. I'm sorry, when you are introducing yourself, sorry, please. When you are introducing yourself, let me know your background so that okay, sir. we can be on the same page. Okay, sir. Your, My name is Atiladi Ajao. Your professional, okay. your background. Okay, okay, okay. My name is Atiladi Ajao. Okay, my name is Atiladi Ajao. I work for First World Communities Limited. Uh, my background is um, facilities management and admin. Uh, I studied social sciences at the university, at the postgraduate level, social sciences also. Thank you. Good to have you. Thank you. Next. Yes. More shoot. Hello. Yeah, Hello. You can go ahead. Yeah. <clears throat> My name is Olufemi Samuel. I presently work as a facility manager with Skyon Properties Limited. Thank you. Olufemi. Yes, sir. Want to meet with you. Is that what, sir? So we want to meet with you. Introduce yourself to the class. Okay, I said I am Olufemi Samuel. Can you hear me, sir? Yeah, yes, I said I, I currently work with Skyhomes Properties Limited as the facility manager. Okay, good to have you. Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Yeah. David Atram. Are you there? Good afternoon, sir. My name is David Aturamu. My background is architecture. Thank you. All right, you're welcome. Habib, okay, Habib has introduced himself. Each ever. It's a ever, Habib. Yeah, it's a ever. Jude Okozi. All right, All right. Good. Uh, good evening, everybody. My name is Ita Envoy. I'm currently facility manager. I work with um, Workmaster Facility Management Limited. My background is actually geology, but I found my way to facility management. Thank you. Good to have you. Thank you. Jude Okozi. Okay, good evening, um, everyone. My name is Jude Okozi. Um, project manager with um, IHS Power, um, studying facility management to be able to um, coordinate the two uh, professions together. Thank you. Okay, as the class goes on, we'll be taking your name and your introduction. So we'll 
go straight to to the class of today. Um, we'll be looking at electrical and power system in a building. Electrical and power system, as well as the management of this installed facility in the building. Sorry. Uh, Want to be school. Yeah, okay. Yeah. We'll be looking at building electrical system, transformer, generator, and diesel management, grounding system and equipment grounded that's the etting why do you need to add your building why do you need to maintain your electrical system in the building or your facility so i want us to pay the attention while we move along so first of all i want to introduce you to what power system is all about what electrical system is all about in the building Without electricity in your building, without power in your building, your facility cannot function. You cannot generate water. You cannot, uh, you cannot get cooling that will make your building comfortable. Virtually, you can't do anything without electricity or power. So that's why it is important for you to understand how this power is being generated how they can be effectively utilized. You may be generating your power or your electricity at a higher cost, whereas you, this generation can be done at a lower cost if you understand what you have in place. And there is need for you to modify them or to improve on them in order to save costs, reduce risk, and to maximize profits. So we'll be I'll be taking you through this uh, slide and I employ you to pay detailed attention. So what is a power system? So the power system is the interconnection of electrical components. Power system is the interconnection of electrical components, sorry for supply and transfer of electrical power. So there is a operation that is involved in power system. Processes that are involved in power system, we have the generation, is the process of transforming energy into electrical form, that's mechanical energy into electrical form. So we have this soft that are involved in ensuring that this power gets to the end user. As the consumer, in production, not until you, what you produce get to the table of the consumers, what you have produced cannot be considered as anything until the consumers make use of them, consume them, and certain these things are okay. That's the feedback. You might be generating your electricity might be producing, but they are not good for your appliances. They are not good for your equipment. Every now and then you are, they are burning them out because you, are, you don't pay attention to what you are generating. This class will enable you to pay attention to what you are generating and what and the feedback from your consumer as the end user, your stakeholder. From this layout, we have the power station where your electricity is generated. In Nigeria, we have about six power station, six power generating station. One, the one that we are all familiar with is the Kanji Dam. We have the Shiroro Dam, we have the Egbi, and so on. 
and, and they come in different form. We have the water, the hydroelectricity, we have the timer and the wind. So here, this is the generation generating station, like the Kaiji Dam or the Shiroro Dam. And it's being transmitted to a power transformer, which will modify the electricity that you have generated. You might be generated at a very high voltage or a low voltage. So you need a step up or a step down transformer to regulate the power that you have generated to what your consumer require or what is demanded by the end user. So that is the uh, transformer. It's only modify what you do. It does not generate its own electricity. So what generates your electricity is the turbine. Like most of us who use our uh, standby generator, the turbine is the same as the alternator, as the electrical part of your generator. And we have the mechanical part that sets up the rotation of the alternator. So in power system of this kind that is as high as this, they use a turbine. They look for a natural way to set it on motion. So as long as water is falling on it, it keeps rotating and electricity is generated. So it's transmitted to this transformer. So we have the, the pylon or the tower that you are seeing here. They are used to convey this regulated voltage or power to another substation where it can further be regulated to what we can handle or make use of in our homes or in our commercial facility. From the substation here, we have the distribution line as well, like the 33 kV or 132 kV, as the case may be. So here is another distribution substation that further regulates the power or step it down to what can be tolerated. And from here, it is distributed to various consumers, like the commercial building and the residential building, as you can see from the layout. So that is the, that's the brief introduction of how power is generated and distributed to consumers. The key point here is the turbine that is set up in motion and the uh, transformer that are used to modify what has been produced. So in theory or in engineering, electric power is a product of two things, the current and the voltage. These are the things you pay attention to. Your current is what your load requires to drive. When I mean load, your appliances, your facility, like your lift, your AC, chiller, pumping machine, they require current to be driven. So without current, there will be no work done in, for your appliances to be operated. Power is the product of current and voltage. Without current, there won't be power. Without voltage, there won't be power. So we further have two types of current. The direct current, which is DC power, and the alternative current, which is AC power. They function differently. The DC provides a constant current or voltage uninterrupted like your battery your ups and we have they are generated through batteries ready and fire ready fire is also called a, a, a setup of diodes or electronic components that help regulate the flow of current in one direction current can only come out in one direction so that is what we call direct current. Most equipment that use the direct current are the computers, the digital equipment, like your PABS, like your scanning machine. They make use of this rectified voltage 
so that they cannot easily go bad. So the voltage, the, the current that your computer requires or your, your laptop requires is the DC. So there is a battery there through which it receives its power. So the battery, the current that flows through the battery is rectified. So what comes out to your computer board is the direct current. So we have the AC current as alternative power is changing instantaneously. It's changing constantly. So they are transmitted over long distance like we saw in, the, in that layout. What is generated from the Kanji down or the Shiroro down is alternative current. So they are changing. They are not constant instantaneously. They are changing. So this current can be generated through alternator. Like I told you, your turbine is it's just like your alternator in the generator you see or you have at home. So it only needs a mechanical piece to be set on motion. So they are generated through an alternator. The appliance that use these are your refrigerator, your air condition, your lift, your fans. They all use alternative current. So this one is, is, is changing instantly, instantaneously, while the direct current is steady, uninterrupted. There is no distinction. So that's why the electronic components make use of DC. These other ones can tolerate any distortion, like your lift and so on. So, for power system, have one or more power sources. In some power system, the power source is part of the system, while some are external. Example of such that is embedded within the system is your welding machine that most welders carry about. So maybe they have work to go and do outside very far where there is no supply or electricity. So they have to ensure they, they, they carry such machine to be able to provide power for their work. Why the external type are the ones that we use at home, like the generator? So the generator is external. Why the load you are driving is, is an, another place. So we have loads. What is load? What do you understand by load? Anything that required to be driven by electricity is called load. It's like your fluorescent bulbs, your fans, your television, they are all loads. So they, they, are, they are drawing current from the generator that is outside or from the supply that is coming. It is called load. Anything that requires uh, that require current to, to, to function, it is called load. All appliances in your home are called load. So load range from industrial equipment to household appliances. Like your lift is a load. We have three-phase load and single-phase load. Most chillers are three-phase load. Why? Uh, your split unit and so on, like your fan, your grinding measure, uh, your uh, what's it called, the blender at home that you use, they are single phase load. When you hear someone saying single phase and double, uh, three phase, it's just that the three phase can only work with all the three lines connected, uh, red, yellow, and blue phase connected. Why single phase require just neutral and uh, one of the lines. That's why they are called three phase and single phase. In Nigeria here, we make use of mostly single phase and three phase. So load ranges from industrial to household appliances. Load I expected to have a certain frequency and phases. I've explained that of phase. So there are some load who operate at a particular frequency. Some in, in stand, the standard is 50 Hz, 
he can tolerate 59.1, 59.5, or 59. He, for, sorry, 49.5, between 49.5 to 51.5 or 52, as the case may be. So if anything that exceeds this frequency, your appliance will not work. Example of such is this Panasonic AC. They reject frequency that is above the standard, that is out of phase, so they can't work with it. Any appliance must have a specific watching. When we talk of watching, we are talking of power, power rating. Like your, your AC, they'll say uh, uh, two horsepower, one horsepower, 1.5 horsepower. So they are rated in specific wattage so that when you are loading your generator or your, uh, when you are procuring something, uh, your equipment in terms of power distribution, you know exactly what you are producing. If you, pro if you procure underrated uh, equipment, it will affect that equipment. So you need to know the rating of your appliances before you order for any generator or whatever that you need required to power your system. So power quality must be considered. That's why I told you earlier on that you may be producing power and the quality is not good. You may be running at a at a at, at a higher cost, using higher cost to generate your power because of low quality, and you'll be paying higher bills. Maybe if you are using public supply. Maybe you're wondering why is my B going higher every day? Maybe it's because you didn't pay attention to the quality of material that you are using. So that's why this class is important for you so that when you go back, you have to check what you have in place to be able to reduce costs and to reduce the risk of your facility and the stakeholder. So we have conductors. What are conductors? Conductor is, is in a layman or uh, uh, in, a, in a general uh, language, it is called wires, cables. So a conductor carry power from the generators to the load. What transmits electric current from where it is generated to where it is needed for use is the cable or the conductor. So when anybody tell you, oh, I need conductor, I need it, it's referring to cable or wire. And these wire are rated in various form, in various uh, rating. We have 2.5, we have 1.5, we have 1, we have 4 mm, we have 10 mm, 16 mm, and the case may be depending on what you want to power. So you have to spec right. We have protective device. Why do you need to protect your installation that you have done? It's to prevent any form of failure or injury. If anybody have contact with this uh, installation, the, in, the, the, the harm will be reduced to the barest. Instead of killing that person, it will reduce it to the barest minimum. So this cycle will trip when it sends uh, abnormality along the installation line. The cycle will trip or the fuse will be open if it sends any surge along the installation line, the fuse will open, that's potential. You don't need to go there to just open on its own because it has been designed uh, to and um, cascaded to open when there is a fault. So a typical example of protective device is the fuse. That's what most people know, fuse. But it has gone higher. Fuse are no longer recommended for protection in our uh, today facility management or maintenance. The fuse element meant when current exceeds a certain threshold. But most technicians, because in this part of the world, people prefer to use the roadside. They'll say, I need light, Oga. What do you need to do? They will just go and cut a wire and rewire the fuse without determining the actual rating of what they are supposed to use. Yes, they have given you power, they have given you light, but your, you and your equipment are at risk. So when the fuel is supposed to cut off, when there is abnormal, uh, when there is problem or as a sort, the fuel will still tolerate it because the wire is overrated. It's still tolerated. Before you know it, 
it will set your house ablaze. It results to fire incident. That's why most houses will say, what's the cause of this fire? Nobody can really trace what happened. It's because you have got one electrician from the roadside to come and give you light. So we have deviated from using fuse to using cycle breaker. We'll get there. I will explain cycle breaker to you in detail. So we have capacitors and the reactors. What are their functions? Why do you need capacitors in your installation? Like most commercial buildings, if you go to their substation, a capacitor bank, bank of capacitor, some are bank of in, in, in inductors or reactors. So what do they do? They are used to reduce current demand on power system. Because the, this capacitor, they store charges on its own. Like the capacitor you have in your fan. If you were to start the fan without the capacitor, you require higher amps, hundreds of amps, thousands of amps or current to start up a fan. But with the help of a capacitor, because it already stores some charges, it just helps you to set that fan in motion within a trickle of an, a, a second. So capacitors are used to reduce current demand. It helps to reduce cost as well. So they are used to limit fault current. When I say fault current, it will accept it and it will go, it will melt on its own. So they are used to limit fault current or to eliminate fault current in your installation. We have power electronics. What are electronics? Electronics are diodes, resistors, uh, resistance, potentiometer, and so on. They are embedded together. They are converted together in a very board. So which now serve as a rectifier or as a potential to your electrical system. So what does ele electronic does? They convert electrical, uh, that is AC power to DC power. It's a converter. That is why most people, they get inverter with the DC battery, there is a component that converts that DC to AC, depending on what you want to achieve as your output voltage or current. So the that converter, that electronic uh, arrangement, we help you to convert AC to DC or DC to AC. So that's why your laptop can work with both uh, uh, supply from public utility, your generator, and as well work on battery. When there is power failure on from the public supply, the battery continues because it is battery that your laptop actually requires to work. So there is a converter embedded in your laptop or your computer as long as the battery is charged. So they are used to limit fault current as well. So they are semiconductors devices, as I told you, transfer uh, uh, resistance. Uh, potential meter, and so they are all semiconductor. They allow few currents to pass through them. They are like, it's com they, they, are com they comprise of sound and a small opening that allow passage of current. They are called semiconductor. They are not the full conductor that allow current to flow through them easily. We have switches. The switches quantity of power range from Okay, from hundreds watt to uh, several megawatts. So as I told you, they are used for regulating your current. Like the if a dim switch in your bedroom or wherever, you can use you can use to turn off your light either to full or high voltage uh, to to full or low voltage depending on what you want to achieve. So that's the work of electronics uh, switches. So we have the residential power system. So they are low voltage distribution line. What the residential customer will require to drive is different from what the commercial uh, 
customer required to drive their appliances. So for residential, we use low voltage or medium voltage distribution line. So this is the cable that you see across the street that is used for distribution. They operate between 110 and 260. Here in Nigeria, we operate between 200 to uh, 240 in terms of single phase. But in terms of three phase, we operate between 300 and uh, uh, 415 in terms of three phase. So in Nigeria, our standard voltage is 240, or between uh, 200 to 240. That is the standard we operate here in Nigeria. So why the commercial price? And they use high rise building, use in high rise building or, uh, or malls, larger in scale than residential building. In commercial building, big of three phase. Most of the machines there are star data or data style or data or star. So they require high voltage and high current to start up their like the it requires current to start its operation with your pumping machine with your chiller so the graph homes and office electrical installation like i told you when i mentioned uh, about the cycle breaker before we used to use fuse to distribute our load but now we are using cycle breaker of different rating and it makes work easy for everybody so you may not need to be an electrical personnel or engineer before to know where the problem is if you understand your layer like this cycle breaker uh, distribution board we are saying decision board breakers are arranged in rating we have five arms have 30 arms, 50 arms, 20 arms, 32 arms, 3 arms, as the case may be, depending on what you want to power. Like most ACs, if the breaker you see 20 arms, like your socket, they are tied to 30 arms or 50 arms. Your cooker is tied to arms breaker. So when you go to the shop board and a, a section of your installation is cut off, instead of tracing, you just go to the distribution board and see that a breaker has been tripped. What do you need to do is to check what happened, what led to the tripping of that breaker. So before you reset the breaker, you have to be sure that the fault that led to that tripping has been cleared. If you don't know how to go about it, what you need to do is to call a professional, a trained electrician or electrical personnel to come and check. It will use this meter like you are seeing here like this meter to check what the issue is when it's confirmed that the problem when it's confirmed the problem and resolve it that's when you go back and switch off the breaker that has tripped it makes work easy right joining wire together in that field that we talked about so fuse has been fed away we are now making use of cycle breaker in your home or in your floors those of us that manage high rise building, you see distribution board on each floor with cycle breaker of different rating. So in installation, we have two types of installation. We have the ring circuit installation and the radial installation. So they all have their own advantages and disadvantages. The ring goes in a loop. So it has a Problem with one point, it affects the other world. Why the radio, the distribution is taken from the distribution board directly and to where you want to use it, like your cooker in the kitchen. You don't, you are not expected to join or uh, combine a cooker with another uh, breaker in your distribution board. You run directly from the distribution board to your kitchen. The same thing with your with some ACs, you run them directly as their distribution. Though they consume more uh, wire or cables, but it's on the long run, you are actually investing to save costs. So 
No socket is overloaded, unlike the ring that you may feel is 30 amp socket. You now bring a multiple uh, socket and plug to it. You plug your fan, you plug your electric kettle, you plug so many things on it. And you are causing that uh, socket to go bad every now and then. So that's what you should know. So I will advise everyone here, the radar system of installation is the best method of carrying out installation. And it saves you, you may feel you are spending too much. It saves you more in the long run than trying to compromise with its ring circuit arrangement. So this is diagram from, from the, the consumer distributable to where it is needed. So we have electrical layouts. When you are given a work to do, nobody is going to draw uh, exactly what a fluorescent is or a electric bulb is and give it to you. They are going to come up with diagram like this, layout, symbols. So it's, as a facility manager or someone who interface with building the facility, it's expected of you to know this, this symbol so that you will not be cajoled when you are thrown into uh, this responsibility. So like here, you will see this is silicon. This is two, uh, two feet fluorescent. We have a, a socket, kitchen sink, and so on. So in our next slide, you see the symbol correctly. So this is four feet as 36 watt fluorescent fitted. So you have the two feet as 18 watts fluorescent fitted. You have both like the globe. You have silicon and so on. So these are the symbol we see. It's better for you to master them, but is it has been improved on. So you need to get yourself familiar with what you are doing. So when you are considering design, so there are so many things you need to consider before going into what you want to do. You have to know the type and eating arrangement available. What type of supply, like I told you earlier, we have the three-phase supply, we have a single-phase supply. So whatever you are, if you are going for three-phase installation, whatever you are buying, have to be uh, in sync with three-phase, like three-phase circuit breaker, you go for it. So when you are going for single-phase, you know what you are going for. So it, it helps you. You know the temperature of that environment. So electricity comes with heat. Is heat when particles come together, heat is produced. The electrics that pass through your uh, conductor or your cable produces heat. If you do not size correctly on the, at the very beginning, when these things are working, before you know your wire start going bad, bridging every most of the time when you carry out con uh, installation where all your cables are buried in the wall. If you do not get it right, if you do not size it right at the beginning, you start breaking your walls. You feel you are saving costs. Maybe a professional gives you what you needed to buy. You say, oh, the cost is too much. Another technician will come. You can use 1.5 instead of 2.5. Oga is the same way. It can work the same way. Because you want to save cost, you go with the electrician that told you to use 1.5 instead of 2.5 mm. So before you know it, your cable start melting, they start bridging. If not, if you are not careful, your house, maybe when you are at home, you will be able to put off the fire. If you are not at home, you will lose the whole facility because you are trying to save cost or compromise standard. So you have to get the temperature right, the moisture of that place, the possibility of fire, extent of mechanical protection required and provision of future modification are rewiring. Why do you need to provide for future modification? You give allowance, you give them for extension. Maybe your parlor, you put two horsepower there. You now discover that 
because of the activity around you, the two horsepower is not enough. So you cannot start doing a fresh installation. It's better you provide that allowance in the first place. In case of I need to add additional uh, apply uh, equipment to what I already have. You create plus or minus so so percent to your installation. So future extension. Maybe you decide to build a bungalow close to your main house because you want tenant now. So instead of doing a fresh one, because you have made provision, so you just link from that your existing installation to where you want uh, what you have rated re uh, recently. So you consider all this. Uh, maintenance cost as well and operating cost is a factor that you need to put in place. Why do you need to, like some people will go and, because they saw this uh, design in Canada or Dubai, they want to replicate the same thing here in Nigeria. Where over there, there is provision for maintenance. But here, you want to change board, you want to rent a, a, a crane or a scaffold of 60,000 naira because you want to change bulb of 800. The position you that bulb may not be okay. That's why you need to get a facility manager in the engineers, the manager, all they want to do, they want to deliver. Once they deliver, they leave the problem to the facility manager. Then facility manager comes, uh, is 20,000 error. It will sound funny. How can I use 20? I can run. Okay. Yeah, sorry for that. Uh, Interruption. Now, as I was saying, you have to consider your maintenance cost. You have to get it right in the first place to reduce your cost of maintenance when need be. So the reason cost of various alternative methods. So you have to have alternative plan for all your installation. Like some people, they have uh, this LED arrangement and fluorescent arrangement. In case I don't have LED in place. Can I leave my house in total darkness? No. So you have to consider other alternative means to be able to manage your facility. Like I told you earlier on, so the first one is the ability of a cable to carry the required uh, Load. So we have that, or we have treated this. Um. So don't oh, don't underrate your cable. Instead, go for a higher rating because of future expansion and other things that may be required in, for for the future. So you have. All conductors and live people should be insulated against direct contact and protected against indirect contact by means of fuses and circuit breaker. We talked about the importance of circuit breaker and fuse in our early uh, slide. So you have to ensure that all these live cables are protected. Don't compromise to that. Ensure they are protected. So in case someone come in contact, instead of Killing that person or being electrocuted, the person is safe by the breaker tripping off. So, all potential electrical conductors, e.g., metal pipes and fittings, must be acted. Like those days, we used to have uh, this galvanized pipe used for uh, plumbing in the toilet in the early days. But today we are making use of PVC. So don't because they have contact with water, there may be leakage current somewhere, and this water gets to where that leakage current. And 
This liver is conducted to the metal plate. So that's why it is advisable if you still manage such facility or have anything that have, anything that have to do with met, uh, potential conductors, you need to add them to reduce effects it will have on human or whoever comes in contact with it. So a conductor must be provided with So a conductor must be provided with, I'm not saying this, protection that is fuses, cycle breaker, and so on. So you have to ensure all your conductor, all your life cables are, protect, uh, are provided with protection. So the reason is to save your installation work and your facility as well as the personnel that come in contact with this facility. We have portable appliance testing. Why do I need to test my appliances? Why? It's good you do your testing every, the interval you have set for yourself. Every appliance has their interval of testing. So if you test, you reduce cost, you reduce risk, and you must mind your profit. So you have to create an asset register for all portable appliances. Why do you need asset register? It's for record keeping. You know the functionality of every of your appliances. You know how they perform when you have adequate record for them so that you don't be racking your head to say, oh, what's happening here? If you keep your record right, when they call, even if you are not there, you will go to tell them this is what I feel is happening because you have information about your assets. And also setting a process, create process. Even if you are not there, you are out of that place tomorrow. Anybody that is stepping into that office have records to work with. So in facility management, records are very, very important. It helps to, to do almost 70 or if not 80% of the job. It makes work easy for you. It will help you to set a routine maintenance. So you know when to, oh, my generator is due for service because you have the record. That's why on the record, on your generator, you see, after maintenance, you put a record there, 250 hours for, for the next service and so on. So there are some you do every year, three years and so on. So there are common electrical problems we experience in a building facility management, mostly electrical. We have the flickering lights. Your bomb is burning out every now and then. We have phase reversal, loss of phase, and triple cycle breaker. So when you experience this, so in this table, you know what to do. It gives you a clue of what is happening and how to go about it. When you experience feeling right, light, I mean, there is either a loose connection or a firm contact between two points. What you do, you retire. So this makes work easy for you. So unstable and irregular supply voltage and frequency. So you regulate voltage frequency to normal value or range. So there's a standard which you can adopt. So your bulb is burning out every time. What do you do? Maybe you align SS current, SS voltage, abnormal voltage into your building. If you have apply, uh, equipment put in place to checkmate all this irregularity, your system will work well. What do you do? You regulate, you adjust to the normal voltage. Maybe you did auto tap changing or you tap your transformer to a higher rating. When they now bring light, you, or you forgot to take it back to the normal. What you expect into your beauty is high voltage. Ensure that you do all you need to do. You may not be the one doing it based on your introduction when we started, 
ensure that your electrician or your, your technicians do what they are supposed to do. They check and give you record. You file your record appropriately. So these are, when you have a phase reversal, maybe NEPA, they have come to work in that location. In the press of connecting back, they put red instead of black, instead of blue, they now put blue instead of uh, yellow. So your lift is working at a clock, but instead of working in the right direction. So what you need to do, you check and so, uh, contact the supply company that is around your vicinity. So we have face loss. What causes open cycle? Maybe along the line there's a fuse or a circuit breaker that is open, like the one feeder pillar that we have in our streets. You see the fuse with blowouts. So it leads to face loss. So tripping circuit breaker, a number of things can be responsible for a circuit breaker to trip. What you need to do, you check all these things and see that your installation is intact. Why do you need to monitor your consumption? You monitor your consumption so that you can establish a, a basement. You know how much you are expecting at every month to advise your management. Maybe you assume an office or you just resume a, as a facility manager in a place. So some tell you it's normal. You need to carry out your exercise very well. You monitor everything that you do. Like you, maybe you are employed to drive down cost. How do you do that if you don't monitor your consumption, what you are using? Some people will leave their office and they leave the AC on because they are not the one paying. They leave the lights on because they are not the one paying. Nobody is using everything they just you are still. They are consuming what's supposed to have been preserved. So what do you do? So when you, you compare, you compare this for you can now then to plot a graph and compare with previous years. When you do that, you have facts that you can use to uh, as you can present before management. So if you assume everything is normal, you are not monitoring, you are not taking record. So how will you justify the purpose or the reason why you are employed in that place? So if you have record like this, you say, oh, last year before I came, they were, were using, uh, we're paying 20 thousand or 20 million, as the case may be as electricity B, because I'm able to reduce excess waste. We are not paying, 18 million or so. So you have your fat because you monitor what you're doing. You can further, you see that there is room for further improvement. You see where we have wastage in the building or your facility. Because you keep record, you are able to eliminate this way and you are reducing cost and maximizing profit for your organization. So they will always want to hear you and listen to you. So. One of those such things that we use for me measuring or monitoring our production is maximum, de maximum demand meter. So they are used in commercial building. They are used in malls. So another type is the check meter, where we have multi-tenant uh, building. We have multiple people occupying a set of building. So everybody cannot be consuming the same thing. I might be regulating my consumption while others are wasting their own. So you don't expect us to use, to, to pay the same amount of energy that I use. So with the help of check meter, you are able to eliminate that dispute when people are to pay their electricity bill. With the check meter, we indicate how much of energy you have used for the month for every individual. So it helps to resolve a whole lot of headache. So all you need to do is to be them accordingly what they have consumed. In our installation, you cannot underestimate the, the value of extra low voltage 
as ELV. Most security equipment uses a ELV as extra low voltage. So it's a means of protection against electric, electrical shock. So when you have a contact with the oil, it will not harm you. You may feel it, 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 it tingling the effect on your body, but it cannot harm you because the voltage is very, very low. So they are used to operate uh, CCTV as a closed circuit television, it's called CCTV. Access control card, security burglar alarm, fire alarm system, and PABS. So that's what you use them for in your, I believe most of us have seen what is listed here. So what's what we use ELV for. So we have transformer, as we mentioned in our first, uh, first or two slides. So it's a modifier, it modified voltage from higher voltage to a lower voltage and higher a lower voltage to a higher voltage is vice versa. We have the primary side and the secondary side. If you want to step up your voltage, the number of turns in the primary, in the secondary, must be higher than the number of turns from the secondary. Like most transformers, they have 400 volts on the primary, that the input side is 400 volts, while the output side is about 11,000 volts, that's 11 kV. So if you want to step down from 11 to 400, it's the same thing. So is the turn ratio that difference? That differs, I mean. So we have various type of transformer, the power transformer. They are used for transmission network of higher voltage, step down and step up application. Like the 33 kV, like that, uh, the our layout in terms of power generation, we saw transformer there. Maybe what you are generating is 60 MVA. 60 MVA is too, is too small to be transmitted over. So we need to step it up to about uh, a number of thousands say, MVA. So we need a step of transfer. That's the work of a transformer. It's step voting from low to high and step voting from high to low. So we have the distribution transformer, which is used on our streets. So some of you have seen this transformer outside. Transformer maintenance is not covered, so like the generator that we use in our homes. So that's a plan maintenance for our transformer in our various uh, facility. We ensure that this plant maintenance schedule are adhered to. So when you carry out maintenance schedule on your transformer, you are prolonging the life of that transformer and also saving costs for your organization. So we have the dry type transformer. These are used in an enclosed environment, like the high rise building, like the factories, where you require less maintenance. So they are used in mine site, underground substation, marine. So most high rise building on the island, they are substation, the distribution substation across the floor. This is what they use. They do not really need maintenance except just clean the, 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 the terminals. So you switch it off and clean off the terminals. So it's, it's, it's air type. It does not require oil, it does not require anything. So this liquid transformer, I've not seen, I don't think it's widely used here in Nigeria. So we have different type of maintenance on our transformer. So these are the things you carry out when you are carrying out maintenance on the transformer. You read magnetic oil gauge. So you see a gauge, if it goes below what is expected, you flag it up, they top it. So you check for the color of silica gel. The color is always something purple, but if it's changing color, you know that something is wrong. So you call for attention. So you can see if oil is, is pinkish, you replace. Check oil liquid from any point of the transformer. These are the things you should pay attention to. Your technician should pay attention to when carrying out maintenance work. So these are monthly maintenance on your transformer. 
check oil level, oil is very key in any uh, form of machine. So you check the oil, top up oil, if below specific level, there's a value that the oil must not go below. So you, you ensure that it maintain the required level. So you have silica J as well. Check the breather as, and check if it's blocked. If it's blocked, you clean it up and remove the particles. So you check the bushing oil in the oil gauge attached to the bushes. You top up oil if needed. You show that transformer prior to topping oil. So you don't operate transformer or carry out maintenance of transformer while it's still live. So you have to ensure you put off the transformer before. Most, in fact, most electrical electrical equipment, before you work on them, you have to ensure you pull them off in order to prevent electric shock and eventual killing. So we have biannual, these are the things you change, the sludge, dielectric strength, resistivity, water content, and acidity. We have annual maintenance, these are the things you check when carrying out annual maintenance. So we have also have two uh, years maintenance, the winding temperature indicator and uh, oil temperature indicator. We check this every two, two years. So there are tests you need to take when carrying out, when working on your transformer. These are the tests to confirm transformer basic design expectation, to confirm transformer main and basic criteria. Test if text is mainly done in prototype units. So we have routine test to confirm individual units operational performance in a production lot. So test is carried every unit produce. So we have special tests. So these are the special tests you carry out. Before you install transformer, you do pre convenience and post commission tests for your transformer. So this helps to get useful information during operation and maintenance of the transformer. Like we said here, test is done as per customer requirement. Based on experience you have had on your transformer, you may decide to say, okay, I want to increase the frequency of maintenance or I want to reduce the frequency of maintenance. It's subject to the customer demand. But as a professional facility manager, you have to have a salary go with the uh, ISO standard. So there are some specific specification, there are specifications that you must follow whether the customer likes them because if the transformer goes bad while you are in charge, it will, use, it will not say it's the one that asks not to service it. They may want to save, but they may feel they are saving costs, whereas they are prolonging the evil day. So carry out the necessary maintenance you are supposed to carry out on your facility generally. So we have generator and fire management is another topic. I would like you to also pay attention as you have been doing. So you have to know what generator is. Generator is not different from uh, the turbine we saw in, our, uh, in the diagram that we, we slide earlier on. So what is a generator? A generator converts mechanical energy into electrical energy. So it, is that generator the me mechanical part that sets the uh, electrical part, which is the alternator or the turbine into motion. So that is why they call this generator. They give out electricity for things to work. Why a, a, a motor receive? They, are, they may look alike, but they work in opposite direction. So generator gives us electricity. That's why your motor can take current from the generator and work. Your electricity, your lights, your fans, everything that requires electricity can take light from or power from the generating set and start have, having light to drive your load. But motto is the other way around. They accept, they take out power from, they take power from generator. They don't give. So that has a difference between a motto and a generator. The generator provides almost all the power for electricity, electric power grid. As I told you, there's no difference between a generator and a turbine. A turbine means something that turns, that rotates to produce electricity. A generator also generates electricity and so and supply the end user. So 
electrical motor to convert electrical energy to mechanical energy. I've explained this before. So it converts electrical. It takes electricity from the generator and to set up a mechanical energy. So the, the, produce, the produced electric energy can be used to transmit power to commercial level, industrial, or just like what we saw in that layout. You have the generating station, which is a turbine, to that transformer, from that transformer to various distribution station, substation, and from substation to various consumer that requires any uh, voltage level. So generator, they also operate and supply at a specific frequency, usually 50 hertz. So if your generator is supplying at, above this hertz, above this value, there is a problem. But there is a tolerance, as I told you earlier on, we have between 49 and 52. Anything outside this is out of phase. So your, uh, your, your appliance will not work. So you may be spending more in fixing your appliance. That's why you need to keep record of what your machine is producing or what, how your facilities are run. So we have talked about alternative currents. It's the same thing like the one we saw with it uh, combined. Alternative current generator, they generate electricity instantaneously, constantly changing. So that alternator that is rolling on the road, so they, they are rotating anti-clockwise in different directions. As a result, electricity is produced. So we have the single phase and the three phase. Like your tiger generator at home, these are three phase, it's not a single phase generator. The output voltage from that generator is just time and neutral. Why a three phase generator, like the one you have in your facility, like the 200 kV, 2000 kV, 2500 kV, they are three phase generator. Mm -hmm. So the output voltage or the output power from that generator is three phase. So they produce equally, they produce equal uh, voltage. That three phase, if you have 400, 400 on each with 400 times three, that's 1,200 volts that that generator is producing. You can decide to make it a single phase, but it will be too much for what you, mm -hmm. that's why it's split in phase. So if I, if the amperage, the current that is demand uh, is coming out from, that one phase is 10 times it by three, you are getting 30 amps on that generator. So that's what you will use to distribute or to power your load. So we also have direct current generator. So you can get this with the help of a Zyta and a battery. So they produce electricity in one direction. So there's a converter that does that. We call the slip ring. Different between alternative current and the alternative generator and the direct generator is the it, if, uh, introduction of split ring and a split ring. So in AC current, as alternative current, you use slip ring. Mm -hmm. Why that of direct current? You use split ring. So. We have a Zyta for AC generator and battery charging chargers. So we have series generator are used for street lights. So most light in Lagos or in most city in Nigeria, they use series generator as does they produce self generating the set. So when you are selecting your generator. When you are selecting, you have a called load analysis, load evaluation. You have to determine the total sum of wattage in your facility when you are selecting your generator. So when you carry out load, and you will be able to spec right. So you determine the surge rating. So you give room for surge in case there is any problem of surge. So the generator should be able to withstand it, and if it goes beyond that, it can trip. So you should, be able to, should have a level of tolerance of, of such. 
ensure voting rate in March. Like I told you, what you want to power, if the voltage is out of phase, it will not work. If your equipment are rated 240 or 200 volt, between 200 and 240, and you went and buy 260 volt, and the generator you are procuring is, is ranging from 200 to 240, your equipment will not work, only wasted money. If it's below two, it will not work. It has to match with the voltage that is required to drive your load. <coughs> so procedure for installation. So some people will not want to mm. engage a professional, but it's advisable you engage a, a professional to install your generator or authorized service dealer for such installation. So I have someone that will install for me. Maybe when they install, they will forget to do proper editing. When you when you invite a professional, when you engage a professional to do all the necessary precautions, observe all the necessary precautions, and put all the necessary uh, protection in place so that when there is a problem, your generator should be able to trip, or your generator should be able to react to the neg negative feedback that is coming from your installation. So before you install your generator, you expect the generator to detect any damage because if you go ahead and install without pre-inspection and anything happens, the, the dealer or someone, the company that sold that generator for you will not take responsibility. It is appropriate for you to carry out all these all this tests before you go ahead and install your generator. So when you want to install, you consider all these things, location, enclosure, that's what they call site inspection. You come for site inspection to know where you position your generator, engine speed, and so on. So the rating, the, the engine speed should not be more than 1,490 something and 1,005 something. So the, the range is, 1,500 revolution per minute. So you know all those things, edge speed, frequency, power factor, and power factor here in Nigeria is 0 0.8. So the starting condition, how does the generator starts? So in the kilowatt rating, number of phases, as I said earlier, we have three phase and single phase. The switch jar that you use. So based on the rating of your generator, that's what determines the switch or the changeover switch that will be required to operate your generator. If your changeover is too low, or the rating that you have. Maybe you bought 100 kV, you want to buy 63 amps changeover. So before, you know, in, the, in less than a month, the terminal of your changeover will start to wear, you start burning out. Before you know, you start having partial contact. So it will affect your generator and the appliance that you are using the generator for. So it's better you size right when you are procuring your generator. If you don't know how to do it, engage a professional. Because you feel you are saving, by not engaging a professional, you will end up, will end up spending times two, even if not times 10 of what you are supposed to spend before. So these are the safety precautions, health mm -hmm. and safety precautions you must consider when installing your generator. Exhaust must not be positioned to face uh, so in the direction where people are living, you have to ensure that you channel it away from people so that you are not feeding them with the carbon, carbon towards like adequate ventilation is required. Well, don't put your, you are trying to maximize space. You went and put your generator in a closed in and tight environment. That won't be cross ventilation. Every now and then you are having overheating of the generator because air is not fresh, air is not cold. I mean, generator need just like human being need fresh air. The same way your generator needs require fresh air to function well. So you must not put cartons, paper around your generator because if there is any problem like fire, those cartons and paper will add as additional foil, so they will make the generator to burn fast easily. Where you will need a keg of uh, maybe five kg to put off five kg of fire estimator to put off a, a fire is around your generator. So, okay. 
So you now be looking for 25 kg as the case may be. So it's better you clear off your list mm -hmm. of combustible material. So you have to put all the necessary sign, do not, no smoking, danger, and so on around the generator and provide extinguisher for generator area. So as I told you earlier on, alternator is what generates electricity in a generator. So we have a component of alternator. We have the stator and the rotor. This is the stator. This is the stator. This is the stator, as you can see, why this is the uh, rotor. This thing is inside this place, like you can see, it's coupled here. So it's rotating inside. This one is going in this direction. Why this one is going at the proper direction? So they are trying to catch up with you. That's what produces electricity. What is produced is fed out from this place and connected to external circuits. So this is a typical example of or the layout of of a generator alternator. I believe this is how a turbine also looks like. Something is rolling across each other, the rotor and the stator. This is where your electricity is actually generated from your generator. So we have the foil system. We have the pipe that connect the foil tank to the engine and so on. We all know this in our various sites. Those of us have interfaced with uh, Foil arrangement. So we have the foil pump, have the foil injector, on the water separator. So these are foil system. So for you to have adequate flow or free flow of uh, foil to a generator, you ensure that the water separator is clean. There is no sludge or clog element around the water separator. Because if there is, if there is. If it will resist the flow of foil to your gel. That's why your gel will not be able to carry the desired load. So it starts tripping. You say, oh, I, there's something wrong with the generator. If I start, it starts. But with time, when it's subjected to load, the gel shut down. You have to check your foil and water separator. It could be your injector because of death. Maybe there is absence of water separator here. The, those death comes directly to the foil pump from foil pump to your uh, generator start affecting the performance of your generator. Uh, so we have the cooling system of your generator. So this withdraws heat when generator components are heated up. And the cooling system will have the exhaust and the radiator. So when you come close to exhaust when your generator is working, uh, when you come close to your exhaust when your generator is working, you see the heat that is being expelled. So the same thing with the radiator. When you touch it, it's very hot. The water there can even make a bar or boil some solid food item. So this helps to expel heat that is generated from the generator. We have the battery charger. It keeps your battery constantly charged. So if your battery charger is not charging well, it will affect the performance mm -hmm. of it. your AVR or your electro, electronic components will be affected. And your generator will fail you when you want to start it. Ensure that your battery charger is adequately uh, for, uh, working. So these are frame. What they do is support the generator. Instead of vibrating, it has to absorb the the the, the vibration and also it's a platform where you can do the editing of the generator body we have the control panel so that's where you communicate with the generator human interface between the generator and the human being just like your computer that's where you add or you infuse anything you want the generator to so if you want it to start start through the panel if you want it to hold off to the panel. So there are various maintenance you carry out on a generator. These are what you check on a daily basis. Before you start your generator, it doesn't take much time, like five to 10 minutes. You check all these. Once these things are confirmed, okay, you can start your generator. If you don't 
do this, you assume that everything is fine. Your generator, just because you didn't check, check your oil level or water level, you end up knocking your generator of over 15 million, 100 million. So don't pay, uh, ensure you pay adequate attention to all this daily check. When you do this, you not think of overhauling. As I do not encourage people to overhaul their generator. If you do proper maintenance, overhauling will be eliminated. So proper maintenance gives your generator adequate performance. First, ensure you drive this on a daily basis. Let the technician, if you are not the one directly involved, let them go and check and give you reports. Because if anything happens, you have to hold them responsible. You should assume that they are checking. Ensure that they check before the start generator. It will give you daily report of what they have checked and give the condition. So when you are doing your maintenance, there are maintenance. Some people prefer 200, while some prefer 250. So different between 250 and 200 is just 50. Uh, that's about two, two days if you run your generator 24 hours. So these are the things you replace at this hour. The foil filter, the oil filter, do all this cleaning, replace engine oil as routine maintenance. You have five hour, 500 hours maintenance, you train, these are what you do, you change the air filter, so on, and ensure that this thing are adequately carried out. And as soon as you do every two to three years, you pay all batteries, whether some battery may last three years, four years, but at this standard, you should replace all battery, replace thermostat, replace all beds and hose, because they all have, have their the lifespan. So these are the things you do every two to three years. When you have adequate records, you want to do this. That's why it's good to keep records of what you do site. So diesel management. Why do you have to manage your diesel? Because that is the food for the generator. If you do not manage your diesel properly, they will supply you adulterated diesel. You end up spending money to fix your generator where you could have avoided this uh, anomalies regarding diesel supply. So there are things you carry out when taking diesel stock. When you do diesel monitoring, it helps you to establish consumption pattern. You know how much a generator can consume at every percentage load. You know, generators are not loaded equally. There are peak loads, you know what you are consuming, you write it down. Off peak load, maybe weekend and night, you write it down. So when you want to do a case, you can say, okay, we don't need 2,000 kV to be powered at night. So the load I have recorded, recorded over time is less than 500 kV. I would suggest we go for a 350 kV or 200 kV for light load. Maybe when, when we are peak load, and when we are off peak load and weekends. Because you have fat that you have registered over time. So nobody will query you. After all, the management is looking for a way to reduce costs. Unlike when you don't have fat, you keep, they tell you, oh God, this is how we have been doing it. So you are employed to bring value, drastic value, positive value to your organization. So what you need to do is to tell the management, we don't need 2000 KV at social time. We need 100 KV or 250 KV. So you are saving costs for the money and it's justified. Nobody will put in for that. So before you, Take diesel or you accept diesel, these are the things you asserted. You check, you check the quality, the diesel supply must be proven to be compliant with industry set standard. So we have values that we use to determine whether the diesel is okay, or testing kits that we use to determine whether the diesel is fine or not. We have the density test, the capillary test, we have the the litmus test. So when you, when you check whether there is water and all, and, and so on. So before you take this, to ensure that all these tests are carried out. So pH test, you check the pH test. So this, if a good diesel will give you this stand, this value, six point seven to seven point zero, that is almost at uh, 
Now, clarity test. That's the visual test. The color okay. If the color is not okay, you can you have every right to say, I'm not buying this diesel, I'm rejecting it. If you feel the color is not okay, there's another test that you need to carry out. Test okay. Test. This test is carried out to determine if the diesel supply is adulterated with kerosene. So if there is if there is a miss miss up somewhere with this test, we're able to know that the diesel is adulterated, we reject it. We have specific gravity test, that's the density test, where you use hydrometer. So there's a standard in the industry that have been set. So this is based on experience that people have had. They have to come to become a standard. So to do specific gravity. So it's between 0 0.20 and 0 0.0. 0 0.86. So if, you, if your diesel, if the diesel that you are receiving is four between this uh, range, you know that is if it's out of this range, you know that it's not good. So it will help you prevent from the damage to your generator. We have the grounding and this grounding system. What is grounding? Grounding means earthing as well. Earthing system. Every installation must have earthing system. The installation is not complete if it's not added. Why do you need to add your installation or your facility? It's to reduce the risk of electric shock, fire incident, fire lightning, and a thunder strike. So when you do your edit properly, your installation is 80% safe. 80. So the edge helps to repair or collect any form of abnormality in your installation. Maybe over current, leakage current. You cannot tell me your installation is guaranteed. There is no leakage current. There will, there, there will be some times when there will be leakage current. You may not be there to say, oh, let me protect this. No, the edge help to correct that, minimize the risk to your installation and your building. So when you are carrying out editing, so what is ETI? ETI is a system of cycle that connects part of an electric cycle to the ground. We have the edge rod and the wire. In some installation, you have the, that green cable, that green conductor. It con is connected to the DB straight to the edge rod. The edge rod is buried. This like this edge rod here. So this is it, it's buried in the ground, and this is the cable that is coming, it's tied to it. If there's any leakage current like this one too, this is the cable coming, this is the air thread. Any form of surge or rise in vote a current, it flows through that air conductor to the ground via the air thread. So copper is mostly used because copper has the tendency of conducting current easily. So don't compromise the standard. So I want to use a lesser quality. No, that is the heart of your installation, etting. So we lay emphasis on etting and you have to ensure you carry out a, a regular test on it. Like I, rec I recommend two uh, tests in the year two, the rainy season and the dry season. So in the rainy season, it, because the current that is flowing through this earth is so huge. And it's, I told you earlier on that current comes with heat, electricity comes with heat. Why do you need to service your earthing arrangement? Because as that heat is produced, goes through where it is buried, heat is produced there and it start form a carbon deposit. It start drying up, drying up, just like your charcoal. It becomes a, a resistance. So with time, it will not allow the passage of electricity easily at the time to block it. So that current is retained in your in your installation. You start paying high bills because that circulating current is there. It has no way to escape. So that's why it's not only to protect 
the human beings or fazin. It also help to reduce cost, the, the, the monthly bill. So because the cycle, if it's not conducted away, the circulating current, that leakage current, it will be circulating within your, your system and it will be affecting, it will be showing on your bill. You say, oh, why am I paying such uh, amount of bill? Whereas you fail to treat your earth arrangement, your earth arrangement. So these are the things you need to pay attention to. Electrical maintenance, building electrical maintenance is very easy. It helps you to save cost, reduce risk, and maximize your profit. And also uh, give your money a good image about you that you know what you are doing. Imagine before you assume there, you were buying this sort of, uh, let's say, 50 million every month because they were using 1000 kVA or 2000 kVA, both of peak and peak period. But now, because you are able to do what you are supposed to do, carry out your gap analysis and implement correction, you will now be able to reduce costs. If you present it to them, they will clap for you. The same way, if they are paying higher pay because they, were, they, they didn't treat their ethics and they don't maintain it, they don't service it, now, because you spend, let's say, 60,000 Naira to correct it, you are able to reduce a substantial amount of about 500,000 Naira from the B. So it will reflect, it will clap for you. So pay attention to all these things that you have learned today and uh, ensure you carry them out. So don't be, don't be too busy to pay attention to them. They are very, they may look so small, but that is what will sustain your business and what you have been employed for. Thank you. We have come to the end of today's class. If there is any question, you cannot ask. And those of you that was not able to, were not able to introduce themselves during the start of the class, you can as well do that. So we have the next, uh, let's say 10 minutes to do all this. Question, please. And contribution, you know, this is a country uh, interactive class. So if you have experience based on what we have shared so far, okay, good work. Have experience of what we have shared so far, go ahead and share so that they can learn from it. Good work, go ahead with your question. Okay, sir. Um, good evening. Uh... Uh, sorry, I didn't get your name at first. I don't know if you could help me. Back. Let me call. Someone is raising Okay. Good work. Go ahead with your question. Okay. Good evening. Oh, uh, thank you very much for today's section. Uh, I really appreciate it. I've thus learned a lot. Well, I'll just I would like to ask two questions, please. Uh, okay. Let me quickly introduce myself. Um, good work, Godwin. Uh, a strategic technical support engineer and also a safety professional. Good work. Go ahead. Okay. I don't know. Are you hearing me? Yes, I can. I can hear you. Okay, please. I wanted to, if you could kindly rephrase, you were trying to, you were, just, you were explaining something about power rating on single phase and three phase. That is, you were saying something about times theory and getting the right amperage for a building system. I don't know if you could also okay. share more light on that, especially on, uh, you said there are some specific uh, generator sets that are for single phase, while some are for three phase. You listed some uh, some value. I don't know if you could help with that. Okay, thank you. Like the, the three phase generator, are you exposed to a bigger generator on your side? Do you manage side? No, I don't, but I have a few experience on it. Okay. Like the, from, from a 15 kVA, 15 kVA generator, there's three phases. From 15 kVA up to 5,000, 3,000, there are three phase generator, three phase. 
okay. why the one we use, the one we use at home, like the small one you are, you know, the tiger generator, those are elements and so on. The output voltage, the, or the output power from those generators, they are single for you have life and neutral, just two wires. One is for life, one is for neutral. But the three phase has four wires. You have the red, yellow, and blue. They are live wire. They carry the same amount of power, the same amount of voltage, and the same amount of current. So the neutral is there to help collect or receive any circulating current or any abnormal current. So that helps, that neutral helps to send it to the earth cable that transfer it to the earth. So three phase cable, three phase generator has three lines of equal voltage rating. You understand? If one is 10 volt, the other three, the other two must be 10 volt. The phase must be balanced. If it's not balanced, it affects the alternator. Why the single phase is just life and neutral? Is that clear? Okay. Is how many KVA is the single phase, please? A single, we have five KVA, we have 10 KVA, we have three KVA, and so on. Is anything less than anything, anything above 15 KVA is three phase. Okay. You know, mechanical generator, mechanical generator, or yeah. yes, sir. Do you know uh, those are three phase generators? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. There was a calculation you gave on times theory. I guess the power rating. And I said, if like what I told you in my, in my ask you your question, I said if you have ten volts, or ten amp, uh, the value of your current is ten amps on one phase. Hmm? Yes. Hello. Yes, I'm with you. So the other two, the other must produce the same rating, ten. the same. Okay, ten, 10 amps, okay. Uh, that's why I said, okay. three, one okay. Okay. That's what I mean. It must be okay. balanced. If it's not balanced, okay. it affects your monitor. Okay, okay, please. And lastly, okay. okay, as a facility manager, we are trying to propose uh, a generator set for a building. How oh, is there a basic calculation we could have or know so that we would know which of the best generator sets would be good for that building to for all load in that particular facility? I don't know if there's a basic or standard. And you have calculation. answered indirectly, you have answered the question. You have to know the total load in that building. Whereas okay. you do load analysis and load calculation. And in my class, I said we should have room for expansion. Don't just, when you get the total, let's say you have all the loads are, is a, let's say 30 KVA that you've got in, as in your calculation, uh, you arrive at 30 KVA. You understand? Yes. Don't sit with 30 KVA. You have to go for about 45 KVA because of future expansion. Do you get? Yeah. And you go for 45 kV or so, because there will be room for expansion, there will be room for modification. So don't just stick to the exact load, current load at you, uh, that you have determined. Is that taken? Yes, sir. And to do load analysis. If you don't know how to do it, employ a professional to help you okay. to save you a whole lot of cost. Thank you. All right, Any other you, question? Please, your name, please. I, I didn't get it. At the My point. name is Abel. Abel. Okay, okay. Okay, Abel. Okay. All right, thank you. Any other question? Go ahead. Okay, you? My name is Abel. Yeah. Okay. Yes, um, I'm an architect by profession, and um, I'm also diverting into facility management. Okay, um, going back to the last question, the my colleague talked about, because when you calculate the load, 
is applicable to me. That's why I, I calculated the load and that particular building, the load that was um, calculated for it was 500 kVA. And then we bought another 300 kVA as a um, backup. But uh, because the metering system for it is, um, we have the diesel meter, we also have the PHCM meter. So we found out because the place started running at um, May, we found out that people are actually not putting on anything because now they can see what they are using. So that means the, the both generators are underutilized. Yeah, exactly. So what we now did last week is we had to buy another 250 now, take away the 500 yeah. and put it, but still, it's still underutilized because people get there and somebody just put on only one AC. They are not utilizing the power that has been calculated for the house. So you get into somebody's house, he's just putting on the AC in his parlor and his fridge is moving. And per month, you find out that kind of person, when you read their yeah. both meters, they are not even getting to 100,000. And you are buying this. This is now 380 or 360, as I'm talking. So I, I still feel sometimes when we calculate, maybe we should look at the way the metering is. It helps us because it was a lot of money. Yeah. Well, no. Uh, what's we had um, we had a backlash of almost five million buying this because it's what they use they pay for. So you can't go back to them and say, please put on all your appliance. Yes. Is expected. So what do you say? Is expected. <laughs> many, many people tend to reduce cost now, their expense. So yeah. what you do to that as they are changing. You also, mm -hmm. as a facility manager, you need to be innovative as well. As they mm -hmm. are changing, you know, they are low, they are low demand. What you don't need, like if 500 kV has been disposed, right? Yes. Hello? So yes, it does. If, 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 uh, if you have a trend that this is the, the load demand, that's why I measure peak and off peak period. So with the way they are using it, you know how much uh, load, how much current, or how much energy they actually consume. You yeah. understand? So you can as well dispose those, uh, we can keep that 200 kVA or 250 kVA and go for a less hour. When you feel you are having, they are loading to full capacity, you go according to how they are loading. So if they are reducing, you go with the lower capacity of generator so and the cost of running diesel we also go in the right in that proportion so you can't stick to you can't stick to i have 250 i must run it so if there is way you can manage it and go for a lesser generator why not because you have the record you know how much they are to me as as in energy uh, per se so if you you, you trend along you go along Okay. Most company, most company, they, they, we are doing that. Like where I work, we used to run two, three, uh, two thousand kVA by three. But with time, we started reducing. Now we can run one, one, one thousand kVA. Uh, no, one, two thousand kVA to power the building. The same way they, they were using two, three thousand, two, two thousand, three, two thousand kVA to run. So, facility management is not static; it's progressive. As they come, you run. So in order not for you to run into trouble in terms of cost, is that taken? Uh, yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Any other question? Udom, blessing. Good evening, no, sir. Udom, Udom, yeah. Go ahead, please. Good evening, sir. My name is Blessing Udom. I work with Cobblestone okay. Property. Limited, and I work as a concierge slash acting facility officer. So I think my question you've answered it because I wanted to ask that what about if and um, for an instance um I, we test a, a load of it and a, um, a place is tested and the capacity is like eight hundred kVA, 
is it advisable to buy like a 1000 kva generator and my second question is if um for the dimmer switch when you said you know that you said something about different types of switch i know so for the dimmer switch if i dim the lights and when it's turned um, when the current is turned fully um, off, does it like um, reduce or reduce the intensity consumption and all? That is what I wanted to know. Yeah, from your, your first question, you talked about 800 kVA, right? Hello? Yes, 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 I did. Okay, okay. are you having a load that is above that 800 kVA or below? Okay, the thing is, that we have two. One is 500 kVA and one is 800 kVA. So they are just like one is, we, they use more of the 500 kVA and 800 is like a standby in case of emergency. So, but the load, the load is not up to 800 kVA. So that is why they use more of the 500 kVA. Okay. Uh, can you, have you been able to determine the exact load? that is required in that estate or in that facility. So if you determine it, you may, you may not need that 500 kV as well. It's, it's because it's 500, it doesn't mean the 500 kV is optimally utilized. Do you get? If you determine the load, I want, to, I want to give you an assignment, maybe you report to me and determine the load of peak period and off peak period so that you know whether it is, even good for you to be using that for all a lesser generator. Do you get, once you determine that, you know what to do. Hello, can you hear me, sir? I think our peak period is um, 200 um, kilowatts. Yes, I can hear you. Speak up. Hello, sir, can you hear me now? Yes, I can. I think the peak period is uh, 200 kilowatts and the off peak um, is 90, 96 or so. You are killing those generators. It's not up to even 30%. And the generator is recommended to be loaded up to 45%. So you don't need those two generators on that side. Is it because, is the off, sorry, if the, is, is the facility fully occupied, or you are still expecting tenants to no it's in. fully it's fully it's fully occupied and it's all 19. so it's not you are not those two directors are not meant for that site you should be thinking of 100 kv both off peak and 60 kv for no 60 kv for off peak and 100 kv for peak or if you want to be if you want to go a bit higher, you can go for 200 kV. That's, that's the highest I can recommend for you. Okay, sorry, sir. You said um, 60 kV for off peak, right? This you said you are getting like 90. 90. 90. You should go for 96. about 60 kV. No, 60. 60. If what you are getting as off peak is 90, you don't need even 200, uh, 250 or 200 kV. If your peak period is 200, as you say, you should go for about, let's say, 200 or 250. So 500 and 800 is, is too much for that estate. Thank you. Thank you very now. much, sir. No, I tell you, say, see that one. I tell you, say, hello, sir. Femi. Yes, Femi, sir. Can you, okay, can you hear me, sir? Yes, I can. Yeah, um, I, I have a question as regards uh, battle power supply, like, like, I mean, an inverter in the facility where you have three different, um, like, sources of power, and you have inverter in place. Hello, sir. Can I come in? Yeah, I said in a facility, in a facility where you have um, three sources of power, and just because of the appliances or the gadgets, you have um, an inverter in place too. So, 
for me, I feel inverter is basically AC supply first converted to DC for battery charging, and the battery output is converted back to AC for usage, if I'm correct. So yeah. for me, I feel the inverter is just there to back up when the ATS panel, because there's an ATS panel in place, automatic system, when it, it's just there to back up for the time it takes for the gen to come on, when EKDC comes on or the IPP goes off, do you understand? But when I got down, the battery on ground is like 10 heavy duty batteries, which can take up to 12 hours back up for the office with normal inverter AC and all that. So I noticed they don't even turn it off at all. So between you and I, I started up a plan telling them, I feel you are overcharging this battery and you don't get maximum usage for them. So I told the technicians, at intervals when you see it, it shows on the dashboard of the inverter 100%. Turn it off. Let it, I don't know, do you understand me? Let it run without supply, without charging for a while. You check your time and come back to it. But you know, when you are not here, technicians can't be trusted. They can, they might not be doing that. So I don't know, is that is there any device that is kind of automated so that when the inverter is full, and so when the batteries are fully charged, it switches, I don't know, <laughs> itself. Yeah, yeah, we can do uh, automation. That is a timer. You use a okay. time a relay timer. You set it. At so so you set it, you set this time at so so time. When you know that your battery is it will be fully charged at so so time, maybe 6 p.m. So you set a timer at 6, 6 p.m. The AC supply should be cut off. It does that, it will be doing that automatically. So when it gets to time that you want it to start charging again, when it gets to that time. It comes up and starts charging, like your extractor fan. You set a timer. And yeah. so, so time come up by 8 p.m. or at every 30 minutes, the extractor fan. So you do use a timer to achieve that. So you get an expert to do that for you. A, a, control, yeah, an a, control, to do engineer, a control engineer. Okay. Or, or sir, I don't you think the guys are, aren't making actual usage of it? Should, or should we leave it that way? Should I leave it that way? What do you think? Is that not wasted? And it's a backup. It's a backup. It's an emergency arrangement. In case you may not be there when there will be emergency, it's not a wastage. You may not be there when there will be emergency, so it comes okay. up on its own. So it's a backup. It's said to come up when there is a main supply failure. You get. It. So they are there for a purpose. It might save a life. If you decide to do away with it, life, maybe when the emergency comes up, life will be lost. So it's there, just like potential hazard, potential risk you have identified, it does not happen, doesn't mean it will not happen. That's why you do protection for your equipment. The breaker is there. It's not, you can't say the breaker is a wastage. So when problem comes, the breaker trick, it saves life and other things in the building. It could be that that inverter is connected to a lift or some essential services in the building that will trigger emergency that people that will save life. Or if you disable it, or if it is not necessary, when t when that incident occurs, so it will be so disastrous. You leave it the way it is, but just do a timing control to ensure that it comes up the way you want it. It's innovation, the way you want it to be operating. Thank you. Hello, sir. I don't know if I can chip in something as per the generator repair, as in generator power. Who is Femi, right? No, my name is Emmanuel. Okay. Femi, are you clear with the explanation? Okay. Uh, Emmanuel, go on. So, the last two questions before we round up. Last two, two, two more questions, we'll close. Emmanuel, go ahead with your question. Emmanuel, are you there? Okay. Hello, can you hear me now? Yes, Hello, I can. can. Yes, okay. I said, I said, okay, as per general consumption, the lady mentioned that our peak period is 200 kilowatts and yeah. our um, off peak is 90 kilowatts. But what um what I understand, I don't know. I mean, I don't know if I'm right or wrong. I know that 
an 100 kV generator produces 80 kilowatts. Mm -hmm. So someone with a 200 peak period, 200 kilowatt peak period should use, um, I think um, that's like 300 kilowatt because 300 I didn't get you. Hello? Yeah. Hello? Continue. Continue. So what, I, so what I'm saying is, what I know is on the KV generator, produces 80 kilowatts. So somebody with okay. 200, 200 kilowatts should be using like 300 kV generator. Because that, that would be like um, two, that would be like um, 240, I guess. I don't know if, it's, if that's right. That's 250. That's, it will, it will turn up to 250 kilowatts. KVA. No, what I'm saying is, I said 100 kVA generator produces 80 that's kilowatts. 80. 80 kilowatts. Kilowatt. So for someone that has two, that producing peak period of 200 kilowatts, mm. should use minimum of 300 kVA generator. Yeah, minimum of 300. That 500 yeah. kVA, she says she has. No, so 500 kVA is like 400, 400 kilowatts. Yes. So it's, it's half of, that's true. Okay, that's true. So 250, 250 kilowatt generator will be okay for her. Yeah, let's say 300, 350 because of future expansion. Yes, yes. So that's what I want to ask. All right, you are right. So if we, if you, uh, Olufemi Samuel has answered, okay. I think that is the end of the class. If you have any other question, you can, you can reach the, the management and they will answer you. Your question will be uh, conveyed to me. So if you need further question, you can send an email or you send a chat. Your answer, your question will be attended to. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Habib. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Good evening, and the lecturer. Good evening, everyone in the class. Thank you for the wonderful presentation. My question, in I will make it brief so that I don't take time. Yeah. Based on what the last caller said, I think the angle is coming from is from the efficiency angle. We all know that equipment or machine cannot give 100% of their capacity. So if a generator is 100 kVA, it does not necessarily mean you get 100 kVA from it. You know, exactly. from, the mm -hmm. you know from the physics and the power factor of it is which the efficiency we work with is 0.75 or maximum of 80 percent so you guess so from that it will be highly recommended to go for a higher machine so someone that has 200 kva load can go for a higher one just like you said for future expansion which is 300 so we should always consider efficiency and the power factor that we can't get the absolute rating of that generator so that is like, one like okay like what he asked 80 kV, uh, 200 kV will give you 200 watts, kilowatt will give 250 kV. You understand? So, okay. uh, uh, based on that calculation, you, will, you recommend it goes for 350. At least there is 100, 100 uh, allowances. Uh, allowances. Yes. Allowance that has been created. Mm -hmm. So, 500 kV is still very, very, it's too much. In terms of yeah. cost, and it has effect on the generator as well. Before you know it, repair work starts showing oil leakage, misalignment, and so on because it's underutilized. Okay, okay. Sorry, a quick one, sir. Another one. Um, in my facility, sorry, I didn't introduce my name myself. My name is Abib Roji. I, I, I am a Ajibola. I am a facility manager in Central Bank of Nigeria. Yeah. Uh, and Lagos Island? No, uh, no, sir. No, no. Um, at Oshodbo branch. 
we have branches right. nationwide. So okay. what I want to know is when you are talking about the load uh, load analysis, is it can we take load analysis and load consumption has the same thing? For example, we use IBEDC and they give us um, um, bills every month, the readings they take from our meter. So the reading they take in a month, can that be equivalent to the load analysis of the facility entirely? No, that's the current load demand. What they, what you bill, what they bill is current load demand. There are other facilities that you are not putting in, putting to you, uh, putting to use. And they are not in use. There are other facilities that are not in use. Maybe your your conference room or some AC, some room or so. So when, when you are doing load analysis, you do total load of installed facility. Assume that those facility are in use at all time. That's one. So you do your current load demand as well. Current load demand, like the record you are taking, if you are taking, if those generators are working, what you get, like the ladies that shared 80, 90 kilowatts and the 200 kilowatts. So because they have a record to show, this is what we are currently consuming. It could be that, so when you are, want to modify or change, make some changes, so you leave, the existing and go with the current one. You understand? You, you make provision for the two. In case I have full capacity, I should be able to, I should have something in place to power that. Now that I have this, I should maintain this. On the long run, you are saving costs. But that higher one should be left there in case you want to run the entire building. If there is possibility of you running the entire building, you don't need to start hiring a generator to come and do that. You have it in place already. What you need to do is to, it should come down to what you are going to buy a small generator, a smaller generator that can meet your current load demand. Is that taken? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. I think at this junction, I would like to call it a day. Thank you for your audience. Thank you for your patience and thank you for your contribution. Thank you, God sir. Have a nice day. Nice, thanks. Thank you, and have a nice day. All right. All right, thank you. Oh. <laughs> okay, bye-bye. Okay, thank you, sir.